Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you my general workflow of how I design 3D parts uh, that actually get 3D printed and then put on my car. So the general idea is I create a model in Fusion 360 and sometimes I can use a surface geometry from a 3D scan, but generally I have to actually measure using a you know, tape measure, caliper, a square, uh, hard surfaces to actually get good measurements from and I'll create those bases, uh, base measurements inside Fusion 360 and then kind of design the part. And then whether I'm modifying it or adding something to maybe fit uh, is basically you know the, the same workflow. Just, so let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna start over in Fusion 360 and kind of show you something I've been working on. Let's go. All right, so once I got my mesh model in from the 3D scan imported into Fusion 360, I've reduced the polygon triangles count just to make it easier to work with. And then I usually start on a flat surface and start building it up. And here's my finished model. Um, you can see I've added this for the switches but the rest of the geometry is very close. This underside isn't too particular. Uh, I don't have to follow exactly where the scan is. And there are issues with the scan's alignment. It, you know, the scan doesn't come out perfectly on plane. So you have to align it to a plane as best as you can. So some edges are not perfect, but it's only off, um, you know, depending on where it's at, it's only off like half a millimeter. It's so like this surface is n not as much as it appears, and that's just because of an alignment of the scan itself. Um, but the scan makes it really nice for dialing in like these these clips to retain it in place. Um, this appears to be low, but it's not actually. Uh, it's just again, it's just an alignment issue with the scan. Um, but it gives you a really good base to start off of. And I'll run you through kind of uh, the whole building process of how I how I created it. Um, I know this is probably not the best representation of how I did it, but it's more or less how I did it. And sometimes it takes multiple tries to get the overall part designed, but it's good to kind of just give it a, a run through and then if it didn't work you have a better idea where to start the next time um, there's definitely improvement in my workflow to be made but you know it, I this is so far the best way that I've figured out I'm going to the problem is if I pause it right now it's going to reset the whole the whole timeline I'll go ahead and speed up a lot of this. Now you can't actually see a lot of these actions happening. They're on they're on the opposite side, so you can see them start to make make movements. And then I re again import uh, or, or enable the mesh again just to make sure uh, I'm I'm basically trying to hit targets for the clips and other dimensions so I, I manip manipulate the model to be as close to the 3d scan mesh as possible uh, it's a lot of the time it's very difficult but obviously more time you spend on it and closer you get it better will fit and more OEM it will look All right, now we're to the end again. Again, enabling the mesh body. You can see all the, the, the retaining clips are all uh, as closely matched as possible. The scan didn't really pick up, you know, the entire hole. 
Um, and, and that's just because, you know, like it didn't, it couldn't see that spot or it was slightly too reflective or whatever the reason is. Um, so I just kind of match it uh, to my best guess. And it is pretty close. Again, we're only talking, you know, most most of these variances between like this edge of the, of the model to the mesh. It might look like a lot, but it's it's less than a millimeter. It's it's like half a millimeter at most in most cases. So fitment is very good. And then uh, I have the alignment of you can barely make them out there. And these are actually for uh, the microphone pickup for the Bluetooth audio. And then same thing with this. This actually seals up against a foam. Uh, surface to kind of isolate the sound um, but from here all I do is uh, tools make and then I can either export it directly to Cura or a lot of the time I'll actually uh, just hit OK and then save it as a STL and then from there I'll either import it into Cura or um, once my new SLA Ella Goose Saturn gets here, I will actually be printing this out of uh, SLA re resin. It'll give me a much nicer finish. And I've had a little bit of issues with these tabs not coming out exactly how they should just because of print orientation. The supports kind of uh, don't really give me a clean defined edge on a lot of these, so it, they, it doesn't stay in place as good as it should. Um, yeah, so here's a time lapse of the 3D print. And here is that factory trim I was talking about. It's the overhead console. You got the sunglass holder, taco holder. I've seen some people use it for, so whatever floats your boat on that one. This trim panel will just kind of pop out if you can get behind it. Um, and I figured, you know, like this whole, this dead space here would probably be a good spot to put those switches. And I kind of marked right there for. The design and then let me find the other one. There it is. And then this is the 3D print. Hopefully, you can see it. It's not my best print, but it's not too bad. I scraped it down a little bit because this is PETG and I had a little bit of stringing issues. Came out pretty good. Uh, I printed it upright, so some of the tabs didn't come out very good due to supports and same thing along that edge it's not very pretty but again it's fine um, until I get my SLA printer and everything will look a lot cleaner but install is pretty straightforward um, tuck in the back edge and just push them in place um, because uh, the supports were not very good and they kind of ate up the clips it doesn't really clip in place super snug. It'll stay up there and I've driven around with it up there just and it's totally fine. But like it doesn't it doesn't take much to pull it out for the time being. So hopefully again the SLA will actually resolve that issue. I've taken calls with it, the whole placement, thanks to the 3D scanning, the whole placement's perfect, so it sound it doesn't sound any different than the original one. And it works pretty good. I haven't actually tried putting connectors on the back side to make sure there's enough room for the wires but I think there will be god I hope if not I mean I could redesign it it's not that big of a it's not the end of the world but um the 3d printing like really it gets me like right where I need to be there's a little bit of place I decide but it's I don't know if you can actually see that 
that's no more than a factory panel. Um, but the edges are just perfect. Like this back end is a little bit off, but it's really not a big deal. Pretty happy with the overall fitment. So that's my general workflow for most 3D projects. There's definitely a lot of variances. If you'd like me to go into more depth or how I create some other parts, please let me know it in the comments. And on that note, I'll see you guys on the next one.